Systems lead, mission planning. Go ahead, mission planning. The spacecraft has just crossed 30 degrees north latitude. Altitude is 6,000 miles. The dead of night, Friday the 15th of September. In the control room of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, the flight director and her team of engineers are presiding over the death of a spacecraft that they have nurtured for nearly three decades. In less than an hour, they will watch as Cassini sends its final transmission. It's sad. It's, it was 27 years of the investment of uh, many lives into this. Nearby at the California Institute of Technology is the vast family of scientists from around the world who run the 12 instruments on Cassini, measuring everything from infrared to radar, magnetic fields, and cosmic dust. In some ways, I just want it to be over now. You know, you're sort of waiting for it to end, and, and, it, and it's really weird. Very mixed emotions at the moment, really strange. All have played a vital role in exploring Saturn. But it's Cassini's skills with a camera that have been truly inspirational. Head of the camera team and guardian of the Cassini Image Gallery is Carolyn Porco. Carolyn has been responsible for designing the camera systems, deciding when, where, and which pictures to take, and delivering and processing hundreds of thousands of images of Saturn, its rings, and moons. This is one of my favorites. The reason why I love it is because we're seeing the rings edge on, and you just really can tell how thin they are. You can get the sense of three-dimensionality. And this is the famous hexagon, OK? This is the feature that drives everybody crazy because they don't expect to see something that is straight-sided in an atmosphere. It is nothing more than a jet stream, like our jet stream, OK? Really, you can relax. This is not the end of the world. <laughs> Back at the rings, I mean, have you ever, ever seen anything just so magnificently regular and beautiful? With its two onboard cameras, Cassini has unveiled the Saturn system as a strange, mysterious, and unique place. Saturn just captivates people because it looks so supernatural. It engenders the immediate feeling that it can't possibly be real. But we're lucky to have it. I think we're damn lucky to have Saturn. I'm glad I grew up in a solar system that had a planet like Saturn. But taking and downloading such amazing pictures when your camera is a billion miles away through the bleak void of outer space is no easy feat. In charge of remotely managing the spacecraft from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory is Julie Webster. You know scientists and engineers are true nerds, so you'll see a lot of nerd stuff on them. <laughs> Julie is Cassini's chief engineer. She's been caring for the Intrepid Explorer since before it left home and uses a scale model of the spacecraft to demonstrate its capabilities. This is a quarter-sized model, so this is a quarter-sized me. Um, I'd like to be this weight, not this height. <laughs> so you start at the top. This is a four-meter antenna. It was also designed for radar. So this is the composite infrared spectrophotometer. This is the ultraviolet spectrophotometer. This is the VIMS, visual and infrared. And these are the imaging cameras, the narrow angle and wide angle that are used for the actual photos that you see. So this is the ion and neutral mass spectrometer that is the most important data that we're going to get in the last few hours. And here's part of the magnetometer instrument, and here's the other half of the magnetometer instrument. The, the trick is, the reason you want to put it out on a boom is you do not want to measure the magnetic 
field of the spacecraft, you want to measure the magnetic field of Saturn or whatever you're at at the time. Let's see. That's the nuclear battery. I actually sat inside this part during the build. So when I close my eyes and think of Cassini, I actually see the wiring inside the spacecraft and the things switching on and off. And when it goes in, that's that's what I'm going to see in my mind is the is the aluminum melting on the structure. So now we're headed back up to the first floor to my office. Cassini divides its time between gathering data, which it stores on its internal memory, and then sending it back home. A typical day, we're out taking pictures, collecting data, storing it on the solid state recorder, and then we'll turn it back to Earth and we'll play it back for nine hours. We only have four gigabits of data that we can load up, and it takes nine plus hours to play that data back. For nine hours at a time, up to six times a week, Cassini sends its precious images of Saturn on the billion-mile journey back to Earth. In the mission to get closer to Saturn than ever before, getting the Cassini spacecraft to its new home was a challenge for the team of fearless rocket scientists. So, we'll go into the uh, dark room. Inside the dark room, the mission support area is where the whole flight team gathers for critical events, like the final plunge, launch, or orbit insertion. It took seven years to get to Saturn, a spiraling journey that involved four gravity assists, close flybys past planets that boost the speed like a slingshot. It's a flight path designed by head of navigation, Dwayne Roth. We had a Titan 4B. Titan launch. 4B. So that, that was the, to get us away from the, the Earth, but then it still wasn't quite enough to make it all the way to Saturn. So we had two Venus flybys, gravity assist from each of those, an Earth gravity assist, and finally we got a Jupiter gravity assist, and that got us to Saturn. Once Cassini was approaching Saturn, it had to perform possibly its most critical maneuver of the mission, a perfectly timed engine burn that would slow it down enough to be captured in orbit by the giant planet. Saturn orbit insertion was obviously incredibly nerve-wracking. We spent seven years guiding the spacecraft to get to Saturn to get it into orbit. If it hadn't done the orbit insertion, which was a 90-minute burn on the main engine, if we hadn't done that, we'd have been a Saturn flyby <laughs> and just gone on out in space. The Doppler has flattened out. During its 13-year stay, Cassini has revealed Saturn as a unique jewel in the solar system, a gas giant with swirling storms, a dancing sprinkling of moons, and surrounded by bright but paper-thin rings of ice. The origin of the rings is still a mystery, as is the complex gravitational interplay between rings, moons, and planet. So this is one of those discoveries we made that really threw us for a loop. This is the outer edge of the B-ring, and these, as you can see, are spiky shadows that are created by these features here that are sticking up two and a half miles. Two and a half miles above a sheet of debris that's only 30 feet thick. It was just extraordinary. It was out of science fiction. That's what this whole mission has been.